Hi, I'm Mel Hartman, and today we're going to talk about decision making with the King of Swords. So today I pulled the King of Swords. And the King of Swords is a card about using mental clarity, intellectual power, and the truth to make decisions and kind of go about your day. On a day like today, where we have the moon in Sagittarius with all of its feisty restlessness and some energy coming in from Venus making aspects with Saturn and Uranus tomorrow, it's a good tip to use more a logic mind uh, to make decisions these days than emotions, because emotions might run hot and heavy and things might get a little bit chaotic to say the least. I like to think of the court cards in tarot as giving you the who, what, why, and how of a situation. So we have the page first who represents the who. It's like that first initial kind of hit in the face with an idea. Then it progresses to the knight. The knight energy is more like what in terms of how am I going to incorporate this into my day? There's more action involved. The queen is concerned with the emotions and she's the why. Why do I want to make this decision or incorporate this energy? And then we have the king who's the how. He considers not only the internal world that the queen focuses on, but how things will impact the world at large. Now with the King of Swords, we are really looking at the how in terms of making decisions with our mind and our logic powers. The King of Swords is known to be the man of truth and intellectual analysis. And on a day like today, uh, it's really nice to be able to cut through any emotion, cut through anything that's coming at you from the outside and figure out how to make decisions based on what is best for you. Because in the end, you're the only one who's going to have to live with yourself every day, every moment, until the end of your time. <laughs> the first thing I'll do is I'll kind of mentally gather up a team of myself. And the first one is my present self. Super easy. We make decisions with our present self all the time. With the present self, we're looking at how the decision is going to impact you right now. So the emotions involved, you're looking at from like almost like a data point of view. You're not really looking at it um, as to how you feel, but you're looking at those feelings as what are they trying to tell you? You're looking for the belief system behind those feelings. So uh, the present self informs you as to what your current state is in relation to the decision and the emotions give you a clue as to how much this actually lines up with who you are on the inside. The other person you kind of want to bring into the mix is your vision of who you'll be around the time that the decision kind of takes its effects or a little bit after. So this is going to be your near future self. So if it's a decision like uh, what courses to take for college, you'll want to consult the person who is in the middle of those co college courses. So whether that's, you know, a few months, possibly a few weeks out and that's the next person who's on your team, they're going to give you a different perspective. They're going to be the one that has to wake up for that six o'clock class that you're considering or eight o'clock class that you're considering. They're the one who has to, you know, manage the schedule on the day to day. So they're an important person's perspective to consider. And the last person on your team is your way future self. Now, sometimes depending on the decision, I'll even invite the deathbed version of me in and have that kind of conversation to see how the decision may play into like my whole life. But usually you only need to go a couple years ahead. So for the example of a college course, maybe you'll consider yourself at the time of getting your degree or right after your diploma when you're looking for a job. That self is really going to be useful in knowing how this decision is going to impact you on the longer term and how it even affects your identity and how you see yourself. So I kind of gather this team of selves together and using those different perspectives, it really helps me to make decisions that are more logic based, analytical, and it gives me the clarity of mind and lack of emotionality represented by the King of Swords that you sometimes need to make hard or emotional decisions. When I'm looking back at, from the future at where I currently am now, I'll kind of do a check in and see how I was calibrated and see if I was on or off and by how much in terms of if I was realistic in my expectations of the future. Sometimes a card will come back at you more often than seems random in terms of drawing a card. Uh, that's what happened to me today with the King of Swords. I drew it, I think maybe like last week and then again a month before that. So when I get cards that repeat themselves, there's a few things that I'll look at. First, I'm gonna wonder if 
did I not listen to the message last time? Is there something that it's trying to repeat just to reinforce with me is one possibility. The other one that I find usually more likely and the reason why I specifically write down what card I get every day is that it's reminding me that I need a similar mindset to the previous time. So for me, a week ago was when there was a big upset in the stock market. And since I trade stocks, this affected me greatly. And I really needed to make sure to use logic and not get caught up in the events that were happening at that time. So when I saw it this morning, I was like, okay, here we go. Again, we need to make sure that we're not making irresponsible decisions, that we're analyzing the situation and not getting caught up in any sort of momentum or any sort of mania. And we're making logic based concrete decisions. On a day where you draw a court card, especially a king, which has a very, very strong energy, who also likes to plan for the future, you want to make sure that you're not poo-pooing any decisions and not thinking ahead. You really want to make sure that you're using logic as much as you can in your decision making because he's telling you, he's warning you that emotions are not where you're going to get ahead today. The King of Swords always reminds me of, um, you know, in Star Trek, the, Vulcan. the Vulcans, that's it. 